Here are five fall cleanup ideas that I have decided to institute into my garden. Now I use science to garden. And so a lot of these are built into my own neuroses of reading a lot of science and doing a lot of science, if you will. Take them or leave them. I can assure you there are five that you probably have not heard before. Okay, number one is actually increasing percolation. So percolation, if you did not watch the video on how to decompact your soil or how to test if your soil is compacted, it is the process by which water is absorbed into our soil system. Because I know you guys like it when I talk nerdy to you, I am going to teach you something that's a little bit above and beyond higher level and that's called hydraulic conductivity. So the percolation rate can be affected by the physiology, if you will, of the soil and of the landscape in and of itself. So for example, if you're on a hill, bottom of the hill is obviously where a lot of water is going to pool. And so that space will naturally just end up with more water than the tops of the hill, right? But hydraulic conductivity is the ability for water to be absorbed through a porous medium. So this doesn't just refer to soil, but soil science uses this concept all the time and so it's the ability for the soil or the water to get into the soil based on the texture and more specifically under saturated or nearly saturated soil conditions meaning the battery reserve is already full and we're seeing how long it takes for it to absorb the rest of the water there's like a very complex formula to it and everything but because you guys seem genuinely interested in soil science, that's just like another, you know, fun tidbit, if you will. Uh, let me know if you enjoyed this. If you did, I'll insert more nerdy stuff, if you will. Talk nerdy to you. Uh, if you didn't, then also let me know so I don't do it again. Sorry. Now, there is something called a percolation rate. You can have a slow one. You can have a fast one. You'll usually, most times, want something that is faster because the slower it is, the less likely it is to be absorbed and the more likely it is to cause erosion, which means removal of seeds, topsoil, damaging of plant roots, you name it. So the way to increase your percolation rates is in the fall. And one way to do so is via actually making holes, whether this is in the form of like those hole makers that you see for lawns, doing that in the garden or on your lawn because you should increase percolation on your lawn as well to help capture that snow that's about to fall. Or it could be as simple as just incorporating organic material, which helps to break up that soil surface, which allows for percolation rates to increase. So you can use peat or compost or manure. Uh, Typha is another one, Canadian company. You name it, it all works to help increase those percolation rates, but take advantage of your wet springs, your wet falls, and your snow from the winter time, because it's gonna make a big difference when it comes to late summer. You need to increase the battery reserve of water, and the best way to do that is via what I just said. Okay, next up is actually tarping. So tarping is reserved for very specific scenarios, one of which is if you have a disease or a weed issue. So if you have a weed issue in particular, something stubborn like thistle, for example, or quack grass, or you're simply just establishing a new garden in an awkward space, such as a lawn, right now is actually one of the best times to tarp the garden. Now, the reason why we would tarp our gardens this time of year is because it's still sunny and the sun is pretty darn good at killing things. So if we can cause a greenhouse effect on our soil surface, either now in the fall or have it ready for the spring, we can end up actually killing off a lot of problems. Now, what I will say is if you have perennials, do not do this because it will harm the perennial roots and kill them. So avoid that. And another benefit, if you're just looking to cover the soil for whatever reason, it can increase the soil temperature much sooner in the season, meaning you can get out and garden much sooner in the season. But keep in mind, it also can and will disrupt the percolation rate, if you will, of that space. So you're decreasing your water input. So you need to keep that in mind in the back of your head that that space very likely is going to be watered much more often the next summer. Okay, so next up is actually cutting the plants at the base. So the best way to do this is get to the soil surface and cut them off at the base. 
the reason why we do this, particularly on annuals, is because many annuals have a taproot system or their root system in general has done a lot of work for you this summer. And that work translates into higher percolation rates what? This, see, everything's about ca water capture in the fall for me. I, ask me why, because I live in a drought area called Saskatchewan, that's why. So it increases percolation rates, it actually increases oxygen penetration, which increases microbe activity. If you watch the microbe video, you name it, it's just a, a trickle effect. If you choose to just pull the plant out, you're disrupting a lot of the structure that was made below the surface and you're actually removing the food for the microbes at a minimum. So not ideal. And if you're doing a no dig setup garden, which and Geek Crew already knows this, but if you're new to the channel and you wanna join the Geek Crew by hitting that subscribe button, please do. Uh, we don't judge here. If you want to rototill, you rototill. If you don't wanna rototill, you don't rototill and no one's gonna shame you for it but if you choose to not rototill leaving the plants in place is a great step if you choose to rototill leaving the roots in place is also a great step because it increases organic material naturally and it's a food for the microbes so it's a win-win regardless of how you garden and I did a whole video on how to actually compost with a one-time application of all your plants in the fall which is how I very proudly garden is once a year I throw everything in the compost and this time of year is the best time to do it and that method I just showed you is a great place to start with that. Okay, so next must for me, and this one can be argued by some folk in the scientific community, and that is letting it freeze. So argument goes something like this. If you allow the soil to be exposed to cool air, very cool air, such as what we find here in Canada, the theory is that it will destroy or kill off pests like flea beetles, for example, soil-borne pests, either in the form of insects, fungus, or bacteria. Now, this in and of itself can make a big difference in your garden if it did that. Now, the argument, because I always wanna give you guys an unbiased look at this, and I wanna tell you kind of what everyone across the board says, not just my opinion and what I do, and so, a lot of people will argue that this is not the case and that this does not work and that the diseases are still prevalent. So what I do if I know I have an issue is I expose my soil to the cold of mother nature via no mulch, via actually removing snow, snowy, removing snow during the depths of the winter months, all in an aim to expose more of that soil to the cold. Okay, so the reason why I do this and the reason why I kind of ignore the fact that people say it does nothing. Number one is that if the cold can kill off the viability of a seed, if the cold can kill off the viability of a perennial, all of which are designed for my zone because it can get so cold sometimes that if they're not mulched properly, they're not cared for properly, you get winter kill. So if I'm able to get winter kill from plants, trees, you name it, that are meant to survive here, in my mind, you, it means you can get winters that are cool enough to kill things that are meant to belong here. Therefore, I do believe there are in particular insects out there that are heavily disrupted by a cold shock and a continual cold shock throughout the winter months. So that's my theory and that I'm gonna stick to it because I personally do think it's working for me, particularly in the world of flea beetles. Now, a couple words of warning here. One, I would not in any capacity do this in a bed that has perennials. You will kill your perennials because remember, the cold does kill things. Number two, I would not put all my eggs in one basket for it taking out fungus in particular. Fungi, fungus, um, it's pretty indestructible. They found fungus inside of ice melt, ice cap uh, that's old in, like the, in Siberia, and it's all still very much alive and viable. So fungus in general is just one of those, it's very difficult to kill fungal spore. So I don't think it takes out everything. Don't get me wrong, I don't think it takes out everything, but I do think it helps in some cases. And the last thing being, 
it's not going to completely annihilate it because just like winter kill, the entire tree doesn't always die, just part of the tree dies. It is going to decrease, decrease the population in some capacity. Again, in my opinion, and according to some other scientists that are out there, not just me, we believe that another group of people believe that it does nothing. So just do with that what you will. Okay, last one is actually planting seeds for next spring. Yeah, that's right. Despite living in a very cold climate in Canada, it is totally possible to get a head start on your spring sowing. And the reason why you might wanna do this is because the first plants that actually pop up in the spring are gonna be the sign that your soil's warm enough. Because if you watched any of my seed starting videos, you know that seeds need a certain temperature, uh, the soil to be at a certain temperature in order for them to germinate. And if it gets to that temperature, things begin to germinate. So this is a sign that your soil is at a temp where you can begin to sow your seeds or put in your transplants, you name it, which is beneficial if you don't have a soil thermometer or you don't wanna spend your time sticking a soil thermometer all over your garden. You can actually plant seeds sporadically throughout your entire yard to kind of get a baseline of where your garden is at. Now, these seeds can include peas, beans, usually mostly the legume family and garlic or any sort of bulb if you will great time to plant it now i specifically use the peas to indicate my soil temps and when things are ready to go as kind of my barometer so i actually put peas all over my yard everywhere in my yard uh, which is something I highly encourage you to do. And if you want to learn more on the depth you should plant your garlic at or where to plant your garlic, you want to check out this video right here. And that video right there is what Google says to watch. So go check it out.